AMD today, this this morning, I guess it was 12 p.m. Eastern time, but they revealed the Ryzen 5000 desktop processors, Josh. Zen Are you watching? Were you watching? I Why? did. I watched. And, and, you know, it was only a 30 minute presentation, if even that. Yeah. So it uh, it wasn't real long. I mean, they they hit the major points. They they went into a little bit of depth on uh, on what they've done with the architecture. You know, at, at first glance, you see the improvements that they're claiming, you know, per, you know something like 19% improvement in single thread. And that then applies, you know, like I say, you know, the rising tide raises all boats. Uh, so your, your multi-threading improves, obviously, as well uh, in their gaming uh, performance. You know, they claim, at, you know, on an average of a bunch of games that, that they're seeing a 26% improvement in a lot of games. And, of course, you know, the Achilles heel of AMD uh, has been gaming. I mean, the Phenom 2 for the time was was pretty good. But, you know, once you started going against Nehalem and then Bulldozer, which was not very good at gaming, and the original Ryzen, the seven, uh, the 1000 series, I mean, it, 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 had, it was a dramatic improvement over, over uh, Bulldozer. Uh, but it still was not even getting anywhere close to single threaded and, and gaming performance that Intel had. The 2000 series, of course, was was a small improvement. Um, and the 3000 made it at least, you know, competitive. Uh, but now with these 5000 level chips, uh, they're seeing greater performance in pretty much all games across the board uh, when they're comparing the what the Ryzen 9 5950 and they're comparing it to the the i9 10900k and uh i think the only uh, um benchmark that they used that that it was less than the intel was was like battlefield 5 but otherwise you're looking at uh, five to seven percent improvement uh you know increase in performance over uh you know the top of the line intel 10th gen part and Intel doesn't have 11th gen ready, so this this announcement, and of course the release date, if you've read any of the news, it's November 5. And Intel on their Medium post the other day was talking about 11th gen desktop, and it's coming, and it's coming early 2021. Q, like Q1 March. 2021, yeah. which of course Q1 means January, February, March. And the information that we're seeing kind of coming out is... It's looking like it's going to be a March date. So AMD has five months. Uh, you know, the most important being the two months, November, December, the holiday buying season. That they have a product that's very, very strong against, you know, currently uh, what Intel has. And now, uh, what is the TDP of, of the 10900K? It's, it's 125 watts, right? Yeah. In theory, yeah, I mean, if you have the power limits enabled, but all of them have it disabled by default. So really, you're running about a 200 watt TDP on those. That's nuts. And um, yeah, I mean, that's that's a lot of, uh, you know, AMD has their top of the line is still 105 watt TDP. And yeah, they fudge the number a little bit, but not that much. Not it's it's not a 200 watt processor. And this is again. This is you know Intel is at their fourteen nanometer plus plus plus. I can't remember which one uh, Rocket Lake is is going to be, but it's but it's up there. And uh, AMD continues to go strong with. This looks like it's in. We haven't gotten confirmation yet, but it looks like it's an improved version of uh, TSMC TSMC's seven nanometer. So it may be like a seven nanometer plus or. 7 NMP plus, I can't remember all, NPP, they have all kinds of, you know, crazy, uh, you know, I'm supposed to be good at this stuff. And Well, they didn't really stuff. reveal much. Like, I was looking at their information and going through the replay because I did not catch it live and noticing that unless I missed something, because I kind of skimmed through the video and was reading the press release, did they talk about memory? Is this still just DDR4 3200 standard? Yeah, they, they didn't talk about. They didn't go into that, but I think talk about that all process. their testing. If you kind of looked at all their testing stuff at the end that they kind of showed, they were using thirty six hundred memory, if I remember correctly. And okay. so, you know, I 
I don't know. I, I guess the I.O. and memory controller is essentially unchanged. Uh, it's still probably either a 14 or 12 nanometer Global Foundries product. And I mean, if it's if it's not broke, you know, don't don't try to fix it. And uh, I mean, all of the the performance gains that they're really getting is through re-architecting it. So instead of uh, two CCXs, you've got one large CCX. So instead of you know two by four core uh, CCXs, you got one by eight and. They also previously had split the the L3 cache, so it was you know two pools of 16 megabyte, and each core then from the CCX to CCX was you know adding quite a bit of latency. I mean, not huge amounts, but but still a, a pretty reasonable amount that that you know was was not great for performance. Uh, so now this has one CCX and it is one large pool of, of 32 megabytes of, of L3 cache. And each core can access that large pool by itself. So it doesn't have to go through, you know, this CCX communication to read the cache lines on, on the second CCX that, you know, another core is working on that's native to that CCX. Um, and so it's, it, it helps tremendously in overall performance. The Ryzen 5000 series lineup, they only announced four processors so far. None of the non-X models have been revealed, if they're even forthcoming. There was no heir apparent to the 3700X, interestingly. So it was the 5600X at the bottom, a Ryzen 5, still, still 6 cores, 12 threads. Then you have a Ryzen 7 5800X, that's 8 cores, 16 threads. Then you move up to the 3900X replacement, the 5900X. Same configuration, 12 and 24. And then you have the 5950X, the replacement to the 3950X. At the top, still 16 cores, 32, fre- th- 32 threads. Pricing on these is up $50 each. So it starts at $299 with the 5600 instead of $249 with the last generation and tops out at $799 instead of $749. So, yeah, it's, it's you know, 200 megahertz faster at, you know, the top boost. And, uh, you know, of course, they, they probably got, you know, a little bit better uh, internal feedback so that you can, you know, boost a little bit longer and it's a little bit more efficient the way, and they're still hitting these 105 watt TDPs, you know, that, that they claim to have. So it's, um, you know, it's, um, it's kind of amazing what AMD has done. And, uh, considering it, the Ryzen 3000 series has only been out since July of, of 2019. And we've got another pretty significant refresh now. I mean, you know, clocks did get an improvement, but, you know the big the big uh, the big take here is is the IPC had a massive um, improvement. I mean, nineteen percent is is you know again what they figure, and just from one year to the next, uh, and plus adding a couple of hundred megahertz on on top of that, that's that's a pretty significant jump for AMD. I mean, they're really a, a, you know kind of getting their they're ducks in a row and they're executing and they're executing well. Um, I know there is a lot of disappointment in terms of pricing, but at this point in time, uh, all the 3000 SKUs are still active and they will be for who knows how long. Um, and I mean, you know, the, the, the 3000 series is still, you know, quite good at what they do. And AMD is at least offering you kind of an option here. It's like if you want the best gaming performance, if you're not one of these people who's doing you know a tremendous amount of video editing or 3D rendering or things that you don't require more than 12 threads, then this is your option at, at, at 299. Or if if you can utilize those four extra threads um, and you don't care as much about IPC. Then hey, the 3700X and 3800X are are right there, and they're still really good chips. I mean, if if you're huge into gaming, then a 299 gaming processor that that pretty much beats everything that Intel has at that price point, and then several price points above that, and again, is not turning your machine into a space heater. Yeah. Anyway, as far as price goes on the AMD side, I look at it as, look, they don't have to compete on price anymore. And if they have the, the leading processor, it can be more expensive. In fact, in the early days of the 3950 launch, 3950X, I was 
wishing they'd launched it at a higher price because we couldn't find one anywhere and we needed to buy one to test and ended up paying $1,100 for one anyway. So launch it at 800, the market's going to decide the price anyway. And right now, like you were, what was your pick going to be on the podcast? If we'd gotten that far. Oh, I, I think I was, uh, was it going to be the, the 3950? Yeah. We, we I laughed, queued that up. Right. Yeah. Because I mean, it has a list price of seven forty nine and is selling for seven nineteen, and it's been mm-hmm. consistently selling for under MSRP since it became available again. So it, the market will correct the pricing if it's not where it needs to be. Just check Amazon and Newegg; it'll be below MSRP if it's too high. I don't think that it's a problem for them to to sell it for this much because, no. I mean, if these are significantly faster. Gen over gen. This is a huge generational leap. This is massive. Even if it's only, like you predicted 15, right? Yeah. They're saying 19. We'll see all the reviews and see where it actually is. But that's a huge IPC uplift. Yeah. And it's that's worth something. Yeah, it's, it's I mean, they, they pulled the rabbit out of the hat. It's like 2004 all over again, except this time, they actually have a process advantage over Intel. Back then with the Athlon 64, they were one process node kind of behind for most of the time. Now, kind of the, the tables have turned. I mean, they've still got a good process. It's very similar to what, you know, 10 nanometer uh, Intel is like. Uh, but, you know, Intel's not having a desktop chip uh, using 10 nanometer until second half to 2021. But overall, I think that... Um, um, you know, again, you like you said, November 5th is when product will be available. Um, I don't know how much product is going to be out there, but I think it's going to be a pretty reasonable amount. They, they still are constrained by TSMC. Mm-hmm. Um, they probably can't make nearly as much as they would like to, but, uh, you know, their ASPs have improved dramatically because they've got $700 desktop chips that they're actually selling. I know people who have bought the 3950. Um, 3900, they're very common and and they're a good price point uh, for what you get. So now we've got um, October 28th to look forward to. October 28th. Oh, right. Yes. Hey, and yeah. they did a preview. I didn't even see that. I yeah. missed the end of the replay and I guess they were showing a little preliminary... 6000 series gameplay. Yeah, they didn't uh, say what the model was or anything about it other than uh, at 4K, it was running pretty fast. I mean, (laughs) people have compared that to 3080 and uh, it's a little bit slower in most things. It's even in in a couple others. Um, So it looks like at least it is a 3080 competitor, but we don't know if that's the mid-brain skew or the, the, the top end the bottom of the top end or is it you know the top end stuff i mean we've heard a lot of conflicting rumors from all kinds of different people that you know it would be a little bit slower it may actually be significantly faster it could be up in 39 uh what the 3090 levels but but my gut feeling there is is they've got a 3080 competitor okay well thanks for uh doing this josh uh so i can cleverly paste it in to the podcast and possibly release it as a solo video. Who knows? Who knows what's going to happen with this? I do not. It's going to be so many graphics put over our faces. That we'll, we'll just be voices by the time this is done. Yeah. Which no, is fine. It's, uh, you know, it's, I'm yeah, really, so. honestly, one of the things I thought about today with this launch was staring at the screen, like 5,000 series, 5,000 series. You know, they had to skip 4,000 series because they did 4,000 on laptop. Mm-hmm. I don't know why they can't share. I don't but understand either. Does that mean that the the Zen three laptop series will be six thousand, and then they'll go to seven thousand series of the next desktop? Will there be a ten nine hundred X Ryzen in the next three or four years? That's what I want to know. Maybe. Okay. All right. I'm going to go to sleep and think about that, okay. and then edit this. Okay. Not necessarily in that order. Gotcha. All right. Thank you, Josh. Not re- not recording. Uh.